just a quick bit of news before we get started. Uh, there were so many questions that we were so excited about answering for the Q&A video uh, that we actually decided to push the release back a little bit so that we could um, cut it together, uh, take a, a little bit extra time. So we're releasing the comments for last week's video today, um, and we're going to be releasing the answers to all of the Q&A questions uh, tomorrow. So it's a little bit of a reverse thing. Thank you for your patience bearing with us while we sort of, you know, figure out how to get everything on track. Okay. On with comments. In last week's episode, we talked about Vanta Black and Anish Kapoor having exclusive license to use it in artworks. Let's see what you had to say. First things first, a little terminology slash naming uh, correction, which I very much appreciate. The Quixote points out that Cloudgate is actually called The Bean uh, by the people of Chicago. And apparently Anish Kapoor, who came around to it, he really, he seems like he is maybe a little bit of a grump, but also maybe kind of like also a, a great guy? I I don't know, but thank you for letting me know. I had no idea uh, that most people called it the bean. I had always referred to it as Cloudgate. Spinnaker14 makes a point that I think we're gonna see echoed a lot uh, throughout the comments, which is that there is a weird kind of framing for this whole situation and that you can place the blame for uh, certain types of frames for Vanta Black in a lot of different places. And one of them might just be with Surrey Nanosystems and that it is perhaps just extreme for them to be so um, clear or to be so adamant uh, that Anish Kapoor is the person who gets to use this thing and he's the guy and he's gonna use it in artworks and he's the exclusive licensee. Um, and that really, maybe the whole thing could have been avoided, which Sidebar, questionable whether or not they would want that. Like, here we are talking about it. We all know who Surrey Nanosystems are. We all are all talking about Anish Kapoor, so this is great for them. Uh, but, you know, the whole thing maybe could have been avoided if they had said, listen, we're working on this thing. It's tough. Uh, we got this real smart guy, great artist. Uh, he's going to help us figure out uh, how to use it in a creative sense. But uh, once we get through this hump of development, hey, like available for everybody. And that's the ultimate goal. How great is that? Art is a community. Um, and yeah, I mean, wouldn't that be grand? Jacob Rogers writes a really detailed and insightful comment about all of the processes sort of um, related to the creation and use of Vanta Black and the various ways that those processes relate to different types of intellectual property law and um, uh, protection under intellectual property law. And uh, sort of gets to a thing that, that I think is really interesting and that I think is probably also related to the way a lot of these stories are framed that uh, you know, Jacob points out that uh, it, it is legal um, and that, you know, probably good um, in a way to protect uh, their invention and their innovation for Surrey Nanosystems to uh, protect the way that the, you know, carbon nanotube uh, process that results in Vanta Black works um, and was developed. Uh, and that, you know, they should be able to profit from that. They should be able to protect it and make some money. Uh, but that that, for various reasons, does not mean that if someone were to figure out a, another way to create something like Vanta Black, as uh, Stuart Semple did, uh, that it would be illegal for those people to use that color. Uh, that as long as they're not infringing on, you know, the trade secrets, or as long as they're not um, infringing on the, the patents that are used to protect the process that creates Vanta Black, it's fine. It's not the color itself uh, that is under protection. It's those things. And that when you read a lot of the reporting that's done on the whole Vanta Black and hashtag share the black um, controversy, um, I think that there is some missing uh, nuance uh, that, you know, we're also probably guilty of to a certain degree of saying like, you know, it's not, it's not the color itself independent of how it's arrived at, it is the process that has resulted in Vanta Black, uh, which is, you know, maybe the, the sort of utmost example of this kind of ultra black color. Uh, and that the whole conversation might be really different if this was framed not uh, by, you know, um, journalists and people who make YouTube videos as a company owning a color so much as a company owning, a, you know, some goop. Uh, or a method of creating a pigment um, that is one of many possible ways to create a new sort of black. Which, man, that's just not a snappier. Media's hard. Gotta get them views. This is something that uh, the 42nd Matt actually gets at also um, and talks about the sort of um, 
complication when it comes to definitions and the use uh, of um, the use of the ideas that are provided by uh, new scientific discoveries and processes. And it also sort of makes me wonder about, you know, the increasing controversy of science being increasingly understood via press releases. Um, and that, you know, is, is there a degree to which science suffers uh, in a lot of the same ways that, you know, current events um, and political understanding do because things need to be boiled down into the smallest, uh, easily graspable headlines and therefore we lose some nuance. And that, you know, like I wonder, I actually haven't gone to see um, if there are press releases from Surrey Nanosystems or, you know, if there have been papers that are written about it, but, uh, you know, does, I wonder if the source material uh, that puts this information out into the, that put this information out into the world that announced the existence of Vantablack uses unclear terminology in a similar way um, and sort of provides a provides a seedbed for that these types of stories or if this is something that you know um, the people who are writing the headlines um, the people who are working for the Daily Mail the people who are working for you know whoever else um, when they first reported on it, they were like, yeah, 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 systems, that's a color. They own a color now. Um, but yeah, I think that these are, these are great points. Ariel Furman points out that Surrey Nanosystems may have made this problem for themselves by just teaming up with one person, with, with Anish Kapoor, uh, and that maybe there was a better way to go about this, um, as far as involving multiple people or a group of people, or maybe, you know, like, have an open call. Uh, have people apply to be able to use this new color and then make a big deal about, anyways, I'm not a PR firm, I'm not gonna do their work for them. Um, but I think that this is totally spot on. Um, I, my sort of take on this is that it maybe goes against what involving an artist in the first place might seem to indicate you think is um, good or good about your product or true about its potential use in the art world. Um, but at the same time, you know, like we said before, um, there is another angle to be taken, which is, you know, the one where you have a world famous dude who has a highly respected use of color in a lot of his works, um, and exclusivity <laughs> breeds uh, some kind of controversy, I guess, uh, it would seem. But yeah, I think that the fact that, uh, Stuart Semple was able to make at least a close enough version of Vantablack, um, and you know, has probably spurred other people to figure out how to do the same, provides a, a little bit of hope um, and a little bit of a, um, I guess, ultra, ultra black lining. The end. Adam Whiteley points us towards an interview that Wayne Hemingway did with the BBC about uh, the exact topic that we talked about with, you know, colors and Vanta Black and stuff, uh, which I somehow completely missed. Uh, so you should check it out. I will put links to that in the description as well. Jack, yes, clearly it is. Pigmenteur. I want to just sincerely apologize to every French person that has ever watched OVA channel. I'm very sorry. Fourth Fool, good catch. I did not even think of this. Uh, for people who don't know the context, this is Restaurant at the End of the Universe, as stated. Um, Ford Prefect and Zephod Beeblebrox are looking at, I think it's a racing ship that is like perfectly black. Um, they describe it as being so black, it's hard to tell how far away you are from it. Um, and I forget which one of them says it, but one of them says that, uh, one of them describes it as, um, bad for the eyes, uh, which actually, you know, thinking, thinking about that particular little exchange really makes me want to see some Fanta Black stuff in, in person and not just on camera. Cause man, on camera also kind of bad for the eyes. I wonder if it's the same in person. Tori B. Surrenda makes a really great point that the center of the controversy might in fact just be the idea of restriction and that it is a misstep to introduce something into the art world by using um, an artist as a, a PR stunt or an advertising technique or a whatever um, and then immediately saying like and he's the only one who can use it it is restricted um, because you know we tend to think of art as being one of a very few places where there aren't restrictions that it's you know basically art and comedy are the two places where people get very very upset um, when you talk about not being able to do something and it is it is at that moment that you start to upset people 
um, and that you know m maybe maybe the the better choice would have been to go straight commercial uh, you know Vanta black used only in um, that ninety five thousand dollar watch and um, you know on uh, I don't know Rolls Royces uh, and then go from there and people will be like well yeah I mean of course it's exclusive those things cost a lot of money and I don't have any desire for them that's a dumb silly color uh, but as soon as you involve um, as soon as you involve the art world and uh, you start talking about exclusivity Danger Zone.